Hallelujah. 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 This morning, the Most High, we get up to say Shema, Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Akkad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. And bless your name.
I don't know about anybody else, but on day 43 of counting up the homer, I'm walking out expectation. I'm living in expectation because I know him to be a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. I dare you to trust him. In the wilderness. Because he is the most high gyra. He shall supply all your needs. According to his riches and glory. He said if you draw nine to him. He'll draw nine to you. You got to understand. In the wilderness. He's shaping you. And making you. And molding you into the woman and man of God that he would have you to be for the most high God. But you can't lean to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge the most high God because he is directing your path. He's the author and finisher of your faith. You better wake up this morning and say to yourself, I will bless the Lord. At all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Oh magnify. Y'all better come on now. Because in unity is where he commands the blessing. Oh magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Because he's been that good to us. That he would use us as the same way that he would use Israel. Because he's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. That's the kind of God that we serve. He teaches us his word. Don't you understand salvation is a lifestyle? He will teach you how to walk out his teachings and instructions because of who he is. And I'm thankful that the most high God will teach you how to walk it out. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Come on now. He goes before us and makes the crooked places straight. He is the way, the truth, and the light. Therefore, in the wilderness. Oh, Lord. Counting up in expectation. Up to shove a oak. We know there's going to be a great outpouring. As we continue to walk through all of the emotional attributes that the most high would want us to be perfected in, which means he's going to make us whole. I don't know about anybody else, but he's making us whole. And in making us whole, he has to begin to work on our minds. The word says to be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. He has to work on your mind. You got to unlearn some things as you know we thought salvation is just I'm saved but the most high God comes this morning in the wilderness to teach you what salvation really is the most high God has journeyed with us in the wilderness letting us know that he will never leave us nor forsake us he chose us to be a royal priesthood and a holy nation he said be holy for i am holy don't you understand we serve a holy god come on now he said be holy for i am holy so the ruah hakadash is going to lead and guide us into all truth this morning oh you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free i don't know about anybody else but i'm excited about this word that's coming forth this morning. It's something about getting understanding. His word says, through all your getting, get an understanding. And he woke us up this morning to get that understanding from him. Because he's the only one that can give understanding as we're getting ready to walk into a season of wisdom. Come on now. The most high God is like, through all your getting, get an understanding. And if any man wants wisdom, let him ask for it. We are about to walk into a season of wisdom. Our discernment will be turned up. No longer ignorant of Hasatan devices. No longer ignorant of Hasatan devices. So come on in here this morning. Because on 5 a.m. prayer, we teach you. We're not coming to preach to you. 
We're teaching you how to live your life and apply the word of the most high God to your life. Because his word does not return void. Neither shall it be reversed. And it will do exactly what he sent it to do. Because he watches over his word to perform it. Oh, Lord. Woo, most high. I come lifting up everyone on Facebook Live this morning. I hear one word in the atmosphere this morning as we count the omer. Expectation. You can expect him to show up. You can expect him to be a way out of no way. You can expect him for restoration, for a revival in your life. You can expect him as you count up to shovel up. Knowing right now, he's a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. So he says, keep walking in expectation. Don't you get weary and well doing. You are about to reap this harvest if you faint not. I ask you to decrease me as you give the increase. I'm not sufficient of myself. All sufficiency lies on the inside of you. So come on, Ruah HaKadosh, Holy Spirit. Lead and guide me into all truth. Because it's not by power, nor by might, but it's by his spirit. And I will forever give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And it's in the mighty, mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen, 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 and amen. So now, are you ready? For the word of God, the father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. Are you ready for the word of God, the father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob? This morning, we are coming out of the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 27 in its entirety. Okay, this morning, we are coming out of the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 27 in its entirety. And it reads, the Lord is my light and my salvation. What you say? Because we're going to talk about salvation this morning. The Lord is my light. And my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desire of the Lord. That will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord. And to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble. He shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing yea. I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thou face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thou face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me. O God of my salvation, 
when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in the plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are rising up against me. And shall and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. May the Most High God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his most holy word. Salvation according to the scripture. Part one. Come on, Most High God. Come on, Holy Spirit, on day two. Salvation according to the scripture. So, we're about to teach you about salvation. And in this teaching, it's an overview of what the Bible says about salvation. If you are seeking for how to be saved or would like to know how your sins may be forgiven, please see the references in the Bible that talk about scripture and salvation. All right now. Many today have heard about salvation from their pastors and preachers. Most churches will be quick to tell anyone how to be saved. Yet every church seems to have a slightly different description of what salvation is. Why is this? Perhaps it is because many do not hold to the truth of the scripture, but to various paradigms or spin of what the scripture says. This mixture of truth and error is called traditions and doctrines of men. And according to the scripture, this is what turns men away from the truth. Today, the most high, is calling his people to look only to his word, the Bible, for the answers to all truth. To do this, we must diligently search the scriptures. But we must first be willing to discard the traditions and doctrines of men. We must then test everything against the scriptures. Any idea or notion must be tested against scripture. Just as the Bereans did. Say it again. Yes, yes. Any idea or notion must be tested against scripture. Just as the Bereans did. They search the scriptures daily. To see whether those things that the Apostle Paul said were true or not. Acts chapter 17 verse 10 and 11. How much more should we do the same? For things we hear from our leaders. Over the years, many groups have coified. And written down various views of Bible subjects as they have understood them. Man has seen and understood only partial view. However, and has had only a flicker of light on various subjects. May the Most High open our eyes and illuminate his word for us today. What you say? May the Most High open our eyes and illuminate his word for us today. The Most High truly is opening men's eyes today and illuminating the scriptures so that they might prepare to enter into the promised land. 
For those who sincerely seek the way of life, we must return to the scriptures to find the clear and simple message of salvation. The scriptures reveal to us exactly what salvation is and what it is not. So, as we do a two-part series, we will look some of the highlights of salvation according to scripture. Because I can only tell you what the scripture says. So, what is salvation? The Greek words translated salvation in the New Testament includes the meaning of deliverance, rescue, safety, and preservation of life. Many today use additional Bible words and concepts for the word salvation, resulting in mixed doctrines, resulting in error and confusion. The solution for this is to get back to Scripture and to use the Bible words to define concepts. So let's look at a few passages. Many scripture passages equate salvation with deliverance, rescue, safety, victory, and good health. Here are a few of these. And the Lord wrought a great salvation. For all Israel. 1 Samuel chapter 19 verse 5. And that ye will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sister. And all that have they have. And deliver our lives from death. Joshua chapter 2 verse 13. Oh Lord my God. And thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me. And deliver me. Psalms chapter 7 verse 1. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity. And save me from bloody men. Psalms chapter 59 verse 2. And the prayers of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. James chapter 5 verse 15. And spare not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Still, other passages equate salvation with rescue of the soul and eternal life. Here are a few passages. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalms chapter 27 verse 1. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Psalms chapter 91 verse 16. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 27. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfuity of naughtiness. And receive with meekness the engrafted word, O Lord, which is able to save our souls. James chapter 1 verse 27 from the above scriptures 
We see many ideas, many different ideas, but for the purpose of this study this morning, we will focus on perhaps the most important truth of salvation. These are the twin biblical truths of coming out of redemption by the blood of Messiah and entering of entering in to eternal life. In order to readjust our thinking back to biblical terms, we must unlearn some of the previous concepts we might have picked up along the way, most of which are unbiblical traditions and doctrines of men. Come out and teach salvation, Holy Spirit, this morning in order to readjust our thinking back to biblical terms, we must unlearn some of the previous concepts we might have picked up along the way, most of which are unbiblical traditions and doctrines of men. These errors regarding salvations are numerous, but rather than enumerate the error, we will focus on the truth. Salvation, past, present, and future. Y'all better come on in here this morning. Salvation, past, present, and future. A detailed word study of the entire New Testament Yield some surprising results. What you say? A detailed word study of the entire New Testament yields surprising results. We see the words in terms describing salvation in a number of ways. The scriptures are numerous. So we will show highlights. And the required attesting witnesses of scripture to illustrate these truths. First, the New Testament shows salvation as not only a past action, but as a present ongoing process and even as a future event or goal. You better say it again. First. The New Testament shows salvation as not only a past notion, but a, as a present ongoing process and even as a result, future, as a future event or goal. As if that were not complicated enough. What you say, Holy Spirit? And if that were not complicated enough. Scripture shows that each of the threefold parts of man, spirit, soul, and body must undergo its own aspect of salvation, also called redemption and scripture. Ah, come on, most high God. I came for a redeemed people to walk out a redeemed lifestyle. Salvation is a lifestyle, y'all. Come on, most high God. Teach this thing. The simplest way for us to understand the New Testament truths of salvation is to look at the examples given to us in scriptures by the Holy Spirit. These examples reveal past, present, and future aspects of salvation and are scattered throughout the New Testament for our learning. The Most High has put these examples in scripture for us to seek for and to find much as we might find treasure on a treasure hunt. I don't know about you, but I'm on a treasure hunt this morning talking about salvation. Because that seems to be one of the most misunderstood messages taught in our churches. The Most High has put these examples in scriptures for us to seek for 
and to find much as we might find treasure on a treasure hunt. These examples help us to clearly understand the meaning of some of the more obscure passages. The Most High wants his people to find these truths and to become prepared to enter into the promised land. First, we will look at a few examples, passages that show past present and future aspects of salvation. What you say? First, we will look at a few example passages that show past, present, and future aspects of salvation. Past tense. Saved. These include Greek autostrophe and past tense. What you say? Past tense. Saved. And he said to the woman, Thou faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Luke chapter 7, verse 50. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thou faith hath saved you. Luke chapter 18, verse 42. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Who has saved us and called us with an holy calling? According to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. Which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. What? Say that again. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling? Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Second Timothy chapter one, verse nine. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. But according to his mercy. He saved us. By the washing. Of regeneration. And renewing. Of the Holy Ghost. Titus chapter 3. Verse 5. I will therefore. Put you in remembrance. Though ye once knew this. How the Lord. Oh Lord. Having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed them that believeth not. What you say? I will therefore put you in remembrance. Oh Lord, though ye will, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, the woods destroy them that believe it not. Jude chapter 1 verse 5. Present tense being saved. What you say? Present tense being saved. Oh Lord. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? Luke chapter 13, verse 23. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. Say it again, Dr. J. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us, which are saved, it is the power of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ. Oh Lord. In them that are saved and in them that are perished. 
For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ. In them that are saved and in them that perish. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in light of it. What? And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. Revelations chapter 21 verse 24. Future tense shall be saved. Okay, now, now we don't went from save, saved, to shall be saved. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, Yeshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Come on, salvation! And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endures to the end shall be saved. Matthew chapter 10 verse 22. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Matthew chapter 24 verse 13. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Mark chapter 13, verse 13. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Mark chapter 16, verse 16. But we believe that through grace, of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, even as they, Acts chapter 15, verse 11, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep a memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 2, let the scripture speak. So the scriptures are examples of past, present, and future aspects of salvation. What you say? So the scriptures are examples of past, present, and future aspects of salvation. However, some of these verses are not easily understood in light of our existing paradigm the spin we have been taught regarding salvation much of what we know and understand has been tainted by centuries of traditions and doctrines of men we must therefore Return to the scripture. What you say? We must therefore return to scripture. For example, let's assume the word salvation referred only to a one-time historical event. I'm going to let you sit right there for a second. <coughs> Oh, Lord. Let's assume the word salvation refers only to a one-time historical event. The statement, then the statement, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. And Matthew chapter 10 verse 22 does not seem to agree with our assumption. What you say? Okay. For example, 
Let's assume the word salvation refers only to a one-time historical event. You know when you walk down and you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. That was salvation. Because we give these salvation messages every Sunday. So, for example, let's assume the word salvation refers to only a one-time historical event. Then the statement, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 22, does not seem to agree with our assumption. So in order to help us have a good understanding of biblical salvation, we must look at all scripture. So in order to help us have a good understanding of biblical salvation, we must look at all of scripture. We must likewise use Bible words and terminologies to discuss Bible truths. Using Bible words for Bible truths. I already told y'all, we teach on 5 a.m. in prayer. We don't come to preach to you. We come to open your understanding. Because some things that we have learned needs to be unlearned. Right. Oh, Lord. Using Bible words for Bible truths. Most today use the word saved and salvation to refer to many things in scripture. What you say? Most today use the word saved and salvation to refer to many things in scripture. However, in order to have a good grasp of scriptural concepts, we must get back to using Bible words. For example, redemption is not the same as salvation. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. What you say? For example, redemption is not the same as salvation. Like justification is not the same as salvation. Just as we see the importance of using Bible words, we also must get back to the Bible definitions of words. One of the greatest inroads Satan has made against the believers is the redefining of Bible words by theologians resulting in the doctrines of men which turn men from the truth. You better see Titus chapter 1 verse 14. Just as we see the importance of using Bible words, we also must get back to Bible definitions of words. One of the greatest inroads Satan has made against the believers is the redefining of Bible words by theologians resulting in the doctrine of men which turn men from the truth. Titus chapter 1 verse 14. The most destructive redefining done yet is the redefining of biblical grace. Where the biblical meaning has been blended into other concepts such that the biblical concept of true grace has been all but lost to the believers. Oh, come on, Holy Ghost. The most destructive redefining done yet as a redefining of biblical grace where the biblical meaning has been blended in other concepts such that the biblical concept of true grace has been all but lost to the believers. Further insight 
into these Bible words will be gained when we look at Israel in the wilderness on day 44. What you say? Further insight into these Bible words will be gained when we look at Israel in the wilderness for our warning and for our learning as the biblical example of our salvation. Woo Lord! So let's establish this thing. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let's establish salvation. Oh, Lord, we got a method style to our study on 5 a.m. prayer. And it's a process to study the word of Ahia, Asha, Ahia, which is I am that I am in Hebrew. The great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we seek his guidance and live in a kingdom lifestyle, the Torah. God's teachings and instructions in 613 principles as well. The creator speaks, mother. And then we search the witnesses through the books of the prophets, the never ends, and the books of the writings, the Ketavins. Collectively, the Torah, the never ends, and the Ketavins are identified as the Tanakh. Oh, as some refer to it, the Old Testament, which is the only book that Yeshua studied and referenced throughout the New Testament. Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you. Show to you today. For the Egyptians. Whom ye have seen. Today. Ye shall see them again. No more forever. This phone is ringing. Today we look to the word. Salvation. Hebrews number. 3444. Four, four. Yeshua. Don't worry about it. Yeshua. Today. We look to the word salvation. Hebrews 3, 4, 4, 4. Yeshua! Salvation. Deliverance. Welfare. Prosperity. Deliverance. Victory. The Torah testifies. Exodus chapter 15 verse 2. The Lord is my strength in song. And he is become my salvation. He is my God. And I will prepare him a habitation. My father's God. And I will exalt him. The prophets proclaim. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 2. Oh Lord, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou their arms Every morning, our salvation also in the time of our trouble. The writings bear witness. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 23. Say unto the Lord, all the earth show forth from day to day his salvation. Hallelujah and bless your name. We have completed the method style of study this morning. Reviewing salvation. First, we, we, we have completed the method style of study this morning. Reviewing salvation. First, we look to the witnesses. They're called the prophets, the never ease, and the books of the writings, the Ketavis. Collectively, the Torah, the never ease, and the Ketavis. Or identify as a Tanakh. 
or as some refer to it, the Old Testament, which is the only book, come on salvation, that Yeshua studied and referenced throughout the New Testament. Come on, most high God this morning. Hallelujah. 5 a.m. prayer. The most high comes to give us deliverance from all that's trying to keep you bound in the mindset of Pharaoh. Watch you say, 5 a.m. prayer, the Most High comes to give us deliverance from all that tries to keep you bound in the mindset of Pharaoh. Psalms chapter 119 verse 166. Lord, I have hope for thy salvation and done thy commandments. What you say? Psalms chapter 119 verse 166. Lord, I have hope for thy salvation and done thy commandments. Shalom, Allah King. Peace be unto you, 5 a.m. prayer community. He gives us his word. To consider, meditate on, that we would have his welfare and complete victory over every trap and snare set against us. Hallelujah and bless your name. Amen, 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 and amen. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. I can't wait till tomorrow, till part two of salvation. Come on, most high God. Oh, Lord. You did that. Salvation was in the wilderness. You better come on and deliver me. Hallelujah. And bless your name. So good. So good, so good, so good, so good, so good, so good, so good. Where he leads me, I will follow. So good. So good, so good. Oh, Lord.
something so you know the same for so many years and we think that's what truth is you're gonna have to unlearn some things you're gonna have to really come to knowing who the most high god is scripturally not what you learned in theology school not what you've learned by men traditions and commandments of men but i'm talking about the word of god speaking scripturally now you got a now you know what salvation truly means i can't wait till part two tomorrow y'all might want to go back and listen to this thing again to get you an understanding for real i'm thankful for how the most high god have us traveling through this wilderness counting the omer on day 44 i just love him i love him more today than i did on yesterday so so good so good <clears throat> 5 a.m prayers on the move I, I know we just came back from biloxi in may but we coming back in august so get ready save the date august the 24th at noon at the white house in biloxi mississippi please plan to meet us there start saving the date now August the 24th at noon, we'll be at the White House in Biloxi, Mississippi, doing another conference, teaching the most high God's word. Come on now, how would they learn without a teacher? And Paul said, by now, we should be teachers. So get to the blog spot, get to Facebook, get to YouTube. It will encourage you. Have a supernatural day too. I love you, love you, love you. Oh, I love you. You know I love you. Bye now. So good. So, so good. Salvation is a lifestyle.